When President Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger opened the door to China in 1972, China's economy stood at $144 billion. The average Chinese earned only about $132 per year. Today, 50 years later, China's economy has grown to a nominal GDP of nearly $15 trillion, and per capita income has grown to about $10,000. So how did that happen? From Henry Kissinger to the Bush family and the Bidens and many others, America's elite have helped China become what it is today. And our next guest says it's weakening America. Peter Schweizer is president of the Government Accountability Institute and a best-selling author. His new book just released is Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich Helping China Win. Peter, it's good to be with you again. So before we get into specifics here, give us the broad picture. What's happening with American elite connections to China? How is it weakening our country? Well, uh, American elites in Wall Street, uh, Silicon Valley, and Washington, D.C., uh, have been saying for decades that if we provide China with capital, with access to technology, they would liberalize and become more like us. Uh, that hasn't happened. China's actually become more authoritarian. Uh, but when they sort of pushed for that bargain, uh, they ended up getting very wealthy uh, by doing deals with Beijing. So not only were they incorrect, they became wealthy through an arrangement by which we strike these commercial deals with Beijing and they're able to cash in. And the problem is that even though we now know uh, that this approach is not working, that China's becoming uh, stronger, uh, these elites don't want to give up the money and that the access that they have to the Chinese market. And that's why we're in the situation we are today. And you point out that as you help these Chinese companies, you're really helping the Chinese government and in turn helping Chinese intelligence. Now, let's go on to the Bidens. It's not just Hunter Biden who profited, but Joe Biden himself. Explain. Yeah, so I first broke the story about the Biden family's dealings with China back in 2018. And at that time, I thought it was simply a story of uh, corruption and cronyism and self-dealing by a political family. Uh, but with the new information that's come out, the Hunter Biden laptops, we've also gained access to other email connection of Hunter Biden business partners. Uh, we find it's not just a story of cronyism and corruption. It's actually uh, something that has a, a bit of a spy uh, tint to it. Uh, what do I mean? Well, we looked at those deals that the Bidens got. Uh, there's basically five deals. And we looked at the businessmen in China who made that happen. And what we found is that in every single case, those businessmen had ties to the highest levels of Chinese intelligence. One of them, for example, who helped secure a $20 million deal uh, for Hunter Biden, uh, at the time he secured that deal was business partners with the vice minister for state security in China. Uh, this is the man in China that is responsible for foreign recruitment, uh, and he was also responsible for North American intelligence operations. Uh, another individual that helped make deals happen for the Bidens was, at the time, uh, business partners with the daughter of the Minister for State Security, who runs the entire spy apparatus for China. So this is not just a corruption story now. It, it has a very strong uh, tint of intelligence, espionage, and spying. Where does Joe Biden fit into this? Uh, the assumption has been this was all Hunter sort of freelancing. Uh, what the new information makes clear is that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, uh, when he was vice president, uh, and I think probably up to this day, uh, have intermingled finances, uh, meaning that Hunter Biden was paying Joe Biden's bills while he was vice president of the United States. So that means that while Hunter Biden is collecting the money, one of the beneficiaries of that money is Joe Biden himself. So what does this mean now that Biden is president and China is making threatening moves against Taiwan, the South China Sea, elsewhere, is the U.S. president in a compromised position? I believe he is. I mean, look at this in the context of the Cold War. Um, you and I are probably old enough to remember the Cold War. Imagine if uh, a family member of an American president uh, was doing deals with Russian businessmen during the Cold War who were linked to the KGB. That would be setting off alarm bells, uh, and it should. That is precisely the situation we are talking about today, uh, and I cannot for the life of me understand uh, why there would not be an immediate inquiry on Capitol Hill 
to find out exactly what those ties are, how deep they are, and what it means in the broader context. Well, not to mention Hunter Biden in Ukraine right now with the Russian moves on the border and uh, Biden's response. Uh, that would be interesting to look into that, what the Russians may or may not know if there's compromise there. Uh, what should be done about all this uh, with China? Uh, this is, of course, the president of the United States and his family. Yeah, I mean, here's the dilemma, right? What should happen is that Congress should immediately have a joint hearing. Uh, they should use their subpoena power to get to the bottom of this. And our uh, intelligence and law enforcement uh, agencies like the FBI should investigate it. The problem is that you have a lot of people on Capitol Hill from both political parties uh, who also have deals with Beijing. So they're not particularly interested in highlighting the commercial ties that the Bidens have, even though they are tinged with these relationships with uh, senior levels of Chinese intelligence. It would open a whole Pandora's box on Capitol Hill. You talk about Senator Feinstein, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Republicans and Democrats, I might, might add. Uh, their family members have business relationships with China. Are the dealings unethical or criminal? Uh, I don't know if they violate laws. I'm not a lawyer, but they're certainly highly unethical. I mean, look, you look at any of them, whether it's Mitch McConnell and his family shipping business, uh, by which all of their ships are built by the Chinese government, uh, all the crews are provided by the Chinese government, the financing of the ships is provided by the Chinese government, the contracts to ship goods around the world are provided by the Chinese government. Uh, they have complete leverage over him. You could look at the Pelosi's, uh, you could look at the Feinstein's, you can find the exact same thing. This is an enormous problem of vulnerability that a foreign power, a foreign power that has been quite open in saying they want to supplant the United States as the supreme power on the planet, uh, that our leaders have commercial ties that puts them at the mercy of their whims. That's that's a huge problem for our country, uh, and we need to address it immediately. And I want to move on here. You have a chapter about Silicon Valley, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, Microsoft's Bill Gates. That's only just a few that we can mention. How has their relationship with the Chinese compromised big tech and social media? And I'm thinking mostly censorship, propaganda here. Yeah, censorship and propaganda. But but the thing that was truly shocking uh, to me about the research on Silicon Valley is that these entities are uh, cooperating and funding research in China with institutions tied to the Chinese military, uh, and particularly in the sphere of artificial intelligence. Now, President Xi of China has said that if China can become the superior power in artificial intelligence, they will uh, uh, seize the commanding heights of the competition with the United States. What is Google doing? Uh, what is Microsoft doing? They are actually funding artificial intelligence research at laboratories in China that are linked to the Chinese military that are helping them in their competition with us. Okay, Peter, stay where you are. We're going to take a break. When we return, we'll take a look at China's influence on Wall Street, at colleges and universities. Also, Peter, I want you to set us straight on what we can do to save the American Republic.